Hi everybody, this is a botany exam review, also known as plants are cool. So this is certainly not everything you need to know and I haven't uh, seen the actual exam, but I know the major points. And since we uh, didn't really use the book so much except for the images, I encourage you to look through the PowerPoints again, um, listen to the ones that were made into videos, and um, you know, definitely pursue those major points that we're going to go through. But I think you'll find this really helpful. So I made up some questions. I took some questions out of review books I have and um, also have some images to remind you about what to study. So here we go. I promise not to fall asleep in this one. All right, so these are the main topics. Uh, we do expect you to know photosynthesis, but more like big picture. Now that you know so much about botany, where does photosynthesis fit in? How does the anatomy of the plant support what you know about photosynthesis? Where does photosynthesis occur? That kind of thing. Plant anatomy, we expect you to know the structures of the shoots, of the roots, of the flower, um, the leaves, etc. Plant growth, okay? And the, the meristem, the mitosis, the zone of elongation, etc. Um, transport. How do the xylem and phloem work? Reproduction, the flowers that we looked at, hormones, that's just that short little bit, just a few hormones to know, and plant nutrition. All right, so here's that same plant anatomy picture that we've been talking about for so long. So if you haven't memorized it yet, um, why don't you pause here and Take a look and see if you can write down all of the parts that are shown here. Okay, and now I'm going to show you the answers. So there you go. This one is, of course, in your book. One of the big confusions was about um, terminal buds, okay? So I just want to remind you that this is a terminal bud and this is a terminal bud. So it doesn't have to be on the top to be a terminal bud. So a terminal bud, as you see, comes way out of the stem, and this one comes way out of the stem. So an axillary bud, I think somebody called the little armpit bud, are nestled in there, okay, close to the stem, All right? as are these. So I hope that that helps. Um, you tap roots, okay, don't always like... Uh, live alone there, they can also have lateral roots um, coming off of them. And we talked about root hairs, there could be tiny little root hairs here too. All right, let's have a question. What are the three types of cells? So for each of these questions, I encourage you to pause and I will say pause and then I will play the answers. Okay, parenchyma sclerenchyma, and colenchyma. All right, so um, I would also say that right now you should take a minute and write down the characteristics of each of those. All right, and here's a question about cell types. Which cells include the mesophyll cells which perform photosynthesis. So see, this is how photosynthesis can weave back in here. So pause to think about the answer. Here comes the answer. Okay, parenchymal cells. Here's another cell type question. Which cell types make up the tough seed coats and pits and make pears have a gritty texture? So pause. Here comes the answer. Sclerenchyma, aren't you proud of yourself? Give yourself a pat on the back. Here's another one. Which cell type has the function of support of a growing stem? An example is the strings of celery. Pause. All right, the answer is colenchyma cells, or colenchyma cells. cells. Okay, and here's a tissue question. Not like Kleenex, you know, not that kind of tissue. What are the three types of tissue found in a root from outside to inside? 
pause. And here's the answer. Dermal, ground, and vascular. Hopefully you've got that down. We went over that a bunch of times. Sorry, my dog is whining in the background here. Here we go. Roots. List and describe the three types of root we dis roots we discussed. So take a moment and write those down. Writing down these um, answers, practicing seeing what you know and what you don't know, will help you enormously. So I would not just skim through this. I would do what I say. So pause and write them down. All right, and here comes the answer. Top root, which is a single large root like a carrot, which uh, um, usually dicots. Fibrous roots hold plants in place. Okay, these are like grasses. And um, you remember what they look like, I hope. You would be able to recognize them if you saw a picture of them. They're usually uh, monocots. Grasses are monocots. And then the root hairs, which aid in the absorption of minerals and waters. All right, growth. Go ahead and label that like you did in the quiz. All right, so pause and either draw a little picture or just write what A, B, C, and D are. And um, I will give you the answers in the next slide. Okay, here come the answers. Okay, A is zone of maturation. Zone B is zone of elongation. There was a question about whether you needed to include zone the word zone, but that is how it's typically explained. Um, if you said area of maturation, people wouldn't definitively know what you're talking about. We really call them zones, okay? Z is the apical mer meristem. Um, remember, we usually have apical and lateral, and you know the difference between those. And then the root cap, All right? Be able to identify the names and functions of the parts. I don't know why it says it twice. There's something wrong when I pasted it. All right, here comes another labeling picture. Okay, so um, pause for a second and figure out what's going on here, and then I'll show you the answers. Okay, A is the cortex or pith, B is a vascular bundle, C is xylem, D is phloem, and E is epidermis. So I think that's really helpful because we haven't gone over that in a while. Okay. All right, question on stomate. Uh, list the factors that would cause stomates or stomatas to close. All right, here come the answers. High temperatures, dehydration, and lack of water. The difference between dehydration and being lack of, of water um, being that a condition causing dehydration versus like a, a dry season. All right, here comes another question about that. List the factors that cause them to open. So pause and write down whatever you can think of. And here comes some answers. All right, depletion of carbon dioxide when photosynthesis begins. Here comes another one. The active transport of protons out of the guard cells. If you don't remember what guard cells do, please review that. Um, it was in two different PowerPoints. It, uh, I think Ms. Aber did it with the um, hormones and um, I discussed it in, uh, not growth, maybe transport, I think. Okay. Um, and an increase in potassium ions in the guard cells. Okay, also let's talk about transpiration. List factors that affect transpiration. This was on your last quiz, I think. All right, so write down as many as you can think of and pause. All right, here comes the answers. High humidity slows it down. Low humidity speeds it up. Wind can reduce humidity, so speeds it up. And more light can increase photosynthesis and increase the rate of transpiration. Here again is where photosynthesis comes in and ties all this stuff together. So um, think about why an increase 
in photosynthesis would increase the rate of transpiration. What do you think? Hmm. And why would high humidity slow it down and low humidity speed it up? All right, so when you have um, a lot of absorption of sunlight in photosynthesis, uh, it can drive transpiration by causing water to evaporate from the leaf. So um, when we have a lot of humidity, we're not going to evaporate so much water through transpiration. Um, but if we have low humidity, we are because we're going to want to pull water up from the roots. Okay, move on, on here. All right, tree. Um, this is going to be a multiple choice question. Which tissue makes up most of the wood of a tree? And here come the answers. A, bark. B, primary phloem. C, secondary phloem. D, primary xylem. E, secondary xylem. So pause here and think about your answer. Okay, so here comes the answer. Sort of. There we go. The answer is E, secondary xylem. So wood consists of secondary xylem. The primary xylem was formed first and is located in a small area in the center of the tree. So um, this is part of the growth PowerPoint if you're stuck on this. Okay, transport. Which of the following results from direct expenditure of energy in a plant? And, um, oops, there you go. Which of the following results from direct expenditure of energy in a plant? So this is going to be another multiple choice question. A, root pressure. B, evaporation of water from leaves. C, water flowing into the root apoplast. D, transpirational flow. Or E, sap flowing from the leaves to the roots. So which of these results from using energy? So which of these requires energy? So pause and think about the answer. And the answer is, of course, E, sap flowing from the leaves to the roots. So xylem, remember, is negative pressure and is being like a pull up um, from transpiration, creating uh, root pressure up. Um, and evaporation of water from leaves is transpiration. And water flowing into the root apoplast is a part of the xylem. And um, transpirational flow also. And all of that does not require energy. OK? Um, on the other hand, the phloem is positive pressure going from source to sink, and that does require energy, and it's positive pressure, and that's what E is talking about. Sap flowing from the leaves to the roots um, is the phloem. Fertilization. This is a multiple choice question as well. Which of the following occurs after fertilization? A, the ovule becomes the seed, the ovary becomes the fruit. B, the ovary becomes the seed, the ovule becomes the fruit. C, the micropile becomes the seed, the sepals become the fruit. D, the stigma becomes the seed, the ovule becomes the fruit. E, the micropile becomes the seed, the ovary becomes the fruit. So this is a little confusing. Um, if you don't remember what a micropile is, it's a little hole in the, um, in the ovule. All right, here comes the answer. The answer is A, of course. So that's the only thing that remotely makes sense, even if you don't know what this word means. All right, so that's an important point to know, that the ovule becomes the seed and the ovary 
becomes the fruit. All right, so um, I don't have a ton of fertilization questions here, but I highly recommend that you review the cycle of fertilization to understand the role of, of fruit and to know how fertilization works. Also, there was a question around the quiz that a lot of people got confused about, which is about that pollen has two sperm in it, and one sperm actually fertilizes the egg to make the zygote, and the other sperm becomes the endosperm to nourish the seed. So here's a question on hormones. When you pinch off the terminal bud from a young plant to make it grow bushy, which hormone is responsible? So this is not multiple choice. I want you to think about um, which hormone would be um, active here. Pause. And the answer is auxins. The growing tip of the young plant produces auxins and enhances apical growth. So removing the growing tip will cause the plant to be bushier. All right, also, study the flower anatomy, the process of fertilization and the life cycle of a plant. And as you're going through this, keep in mind, what is photosynthesis role here? Um, what does this have to do with xylem and phloem? What part requires energy and what part doesn't? Those are the big questions here. All right. And lastly, good luck. You're going to do great. I hope this was helpful. It's not very long, but I hope I had some big questions to get you thinking about what you do and you don't know. Good luck tomorrow.